Welcome back. This is Meet in the Middle. I'm Christine Brown. It's a Monday. And now in our studio, we have the police chief for Kennewick, Ken Hohenberg. Ken, so glad to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You know, it was um, when I first got involved in this radio gig, I saw where you announced a new program. That was like maybe three months ago or something like that. Um, that officers or the Kennewick Police Department would have access to this fund to help out folks in unusual situations. So, um, how can officers use or access this fund? And what is it called, first off? Okay, well, the fund is actually called the Kennewick Police Community Care Fund. And um, it started over a breakfast conversation with a couple of my friends. and. Uh, one of the gentlemen used to work with me many, many years ago, back in the 70s, a guy by the name of Jim Spracklin, and he said, you know, wouldn't it be great if officers had the ability, when they saw a problem, that they had the funds, that they could just go out and take care of the problem? And, uh, you know, I thought, yeah, that's a great idea, because, as I've told our folks, one of our primary missions uh, as police officers is to help people. And we're often in positions, and we see things, and, uh, you know, in the past, officers have actually reached into their own pocket for money at times to try to help people. And sometimes when you have a young family or whatever it may be, you may not have the cash on you to be able to take care of a problem. So we wanted to create an opportunity that our police officers are really empowered to go out and do good in the community and help people in need. And uh, out of that breakfast meeting, there were three of us that uh, donated $1,000 to our police foundation to get the program started. And uh, that has grown. We have, uh, right now, I have a check, but we have a little over $25,000 oh, wow. in that Kennewick nice. Police Community Care Program. So the officers, uh, we have a couple of credit cards through the foundation, and um, all they need to do is get a hold of their supervisor, and, and they can take care of a problem. Hmm, that's great. And um, you know, so tell me what some of those problems have been. Well, as you said, this started in March. And, uh, you know, I was kind of worried because what are the parameters for the program? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I thought was important, we hired great people. Um, the, you know, the men and women that I work with every day in the Kennewick Police Department, it's never been better since 1978 when I walked through the door. And um, so we didn't want to put a whole lot of restrictions on the program itself. Um, really what we said was, if they felt in their heart it was the right thing to do, go to their supervisor and do it. And I pulled up a few examples, and um, one of the first incidents that we had was right after we started the program in March, and we had an officer and a supervisor respond to a welfare check in East Kennewick, and they were asked to check on the welfare of two children living at the location with their mother, and it was reported that the living conditions were very, very poor. They completed the welfare check and found that the residence was very dirty and there was not a lot of food available for the kids. And they further found that a six-month-old baby was sleeping in a playpen, but they didn't have a mattress. So the mother was using a couple of sofa cushions instead to make a, this makeshift mattress. And they spoke to her about the safety hazard that posed uh, for the baby as well as we were obligated to contact the Child Protective Services. Um, and they also said, you know, you really need, there's certain things you can do, you can, you can clean this place up, which is going to be helpful uh, not only for the children, but, but for the mother as well. And then the officers contacted their supervisor, and they really felt like the mom needed some help. She just needed some help financially. Uh, she had some challenges. And uh, so they accessed the, the credit cards, and um, they ended up... Uh, went up to uh, a local store and they purchased a mattress for the crib along with some extra diapers, formula, applesauce for the children. They spent under $100 to do all of that, took it back, and when they went back to the residence, the mom had already cleaned up the apartment and oh, oh, wow. she was kind of overwhelmed really yeah. that the that the officers would do that. But that's, that's an example and, um, you know, as I told uh, the folks that I work with is we are really in a good position because we see things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes uh, there's different funds that have been set up over the years and, and sometimes people will 
maybe not be forthright in their need. Um, police officers have the opportunity and ability to be able to check some of those things out to make sure that, you know, people aren't just trying to get 25 bucks to go out and uh, support some kind of substance abuse. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and to legitimately go out and take care of an immediate need. And we've had, I've got a lot of examples since that time. And like I said, we've had uh, Dave Redder uh, from Windermere of the Tri-Cities. He was one of, one of my friends that uh, I had breakfast with. And he was so enthused that he went out and he was the one that really started raising dollars uh, for a foundation for this particular account. Uh, we've also have community partnerships out there like uh, Clover Island Motor Inn that has offered to take people uh, at a reduced cost and then then they get a free breakfast in the morning and we've utilized that several times as well. And, uh, we've had, uh, we have a restaurant that volunteers, Ranch and Home has volunteered to uh, take care of kids clothing that uh, we may come in contact with. And uh, so it's actually helped us stretch our dollars on top of everything else. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to, for the community really to help itself instead of going out through the channels and bureaucracy of, of uh, <coughs> like a welfare system or that sort of thing where people, it's extremely difficult for folks to get immediate help that they might need. Yes, and uh, you know, it's amazing because we did do an initial kickoff and uh, received some some media coverage on that, and out of that, we had also additional money come in to the Kennewick Police Foundation, specifically for the community care program. Um, the Living Room Church in Kennewick has been a huge contributor. Uh, I think they donated about $5,000 to the community care program, mm -hmm. and we have a lot of faith-based faith um, churches here that um, have similar type programs that try to help people in need, uh, but as the pastor said at the living room church, he said, you know, you folks are in the best position to really be able to help people when when nobody's at our church. And so they've elected to continue to support us and they've been very, very generous. And, you know, truly we've been blessed to have uh, such great partners. Mm -hmm. If you have got a question that you would like to ask the chief or maybe uh, a comment about this program, don't hesitate to call 547-8726. Well, I would imagine that it is very, very frustrating for police in some situations uh, to see what they see and the parameters of their job are not to be social workers, basically. Um, but yeah, as you say, they see it. They're, 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 they see it. Well, I'll give you an example. Before we had the community care program, we had a, we had a 12-year-old boy that was at a bus stop. Um, he was on the sidewalk and um, a drunk driver lost control of the vehicle and, and ended up striking the boy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the boy was with his father and, and our traffic unit went out and investigated the collision and they had to take the boy's shoes. One of the shoes came off and uh, they had to take the, the young man's shoes as evidence. And um, the family didn't have a whole lot of money. And so the traffic officer, Officer Mike Bow, um, out of the goodness of his heart, I didn't find out about it till later, but he took the kid to a nearby sporting goods store and bought him a new pair of shoes out of his own pocket. Mm -hmm. um, that's the kind of thing that goes on a lot, not just in the Kennewick Police Department, but across the country with officers reaching into their own pocket and taking care of things. And uh, down by the patrol area, I have a, a picture of the young man sitting on his motorcycle with the biggest smile and a new pair of shoes. And uh, <laughs> yeah. so he was, I think he was happy, you know, um, the shoes that we had as evidence, uh, they, they were in pretty poor condition, but uh, the young man had made his day. And, and it's just a, it's, it's an example of, of really the good hearted people that we employ. Absolutely. We want to continue our conversation with the police chief of Kennewick, but we're going to take a break right now. If you have got a question or a comment that you want to add, Give us a call, 547-8726. As we start this new week and the final days of July, what's fa let's find out what's ahead with weather. Here's meteorologist Monty Webb from KNDU-TV.
All right, thank you, Monty. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, get out there and do <coughs> some of the things that you want to do in the cooler weather. Uh, with me today is Police Chief Ken Hohenberg from the Kennewick Police Department. And what I find interesting, Ken, is your, um, your creative thinking in putting together workarounds where officers or the department have an opportunity to help in a community problem, but you're not using city money, you're not using your budget money, but you still see a problem and want to affect it. Yes, it's, uh, you know, the foundation idea, um, I'd love to take credit for that, but there's a lot of large police departments across the country that have police foundations, Seattle Police Department, Los Angeles Police Department, and, uh, but there's less departments the size of the Kennewick Police Department or smaller departments that do, and it takes some work to put together a foundation, and, and certainly it takes work to get the right foundation board members that mm -hmm. want to meet on a regular basis and, and go through all the hoops and, and go out and raise money. But, but as I mentioned before, um, really our primary mission is to help people. And so we see a lot of needs, and uh, you know, I have, I, we have great elected officials in the city of Kennewick. I work for a great city manager, and uh, but we have a lot of needs, and there's certain things that when you look at the whole piece of the pie and everything that we support as the city of Kennewick, there's other opportunities that we can fund things through the community. Mm -hmm. And um, the recent addition of the AEDs, the defibrillators in our police cars, that was a $45,000 community donation to make that possible so that we could put the AEDs in every one of our patrol cars. We're often on the scene prior to our paramedics with uh, with a patient with a heart attack, and and certainly if that's if that's my loved one or somebody that I know, right. I'd want the best for them, and, and we're just trying to do the best for the community. Are you taking this on the road? I know that you're involved in statewide organizations, probably national as well. It seems like this would be a great way to help improve some damaged relationships between the police department and the community. Yes, you know, it's one of those things where um, I mentioned before that Dave Redder from Windermere, the Tri-Cities, and he's very excited about trying to push this in other places as well, and currently we're working with the Spokane Police Department uh, with his counterpart, my counterpart. I think there's opportunities uh, to move this forward uh, in the Tri-Cities. Certainly, if one of our fellow law enforcement agencies saw a need and, and they needed some help in taking care of that, uh, my philosophy has always been uh, it's what's best for the Tri-Cities, it's not just what's best for Kennewick. Uh, certainly uh, most of our donors, they just want to make sure that the money goes to help people. Mm -hmm. Well, if people want to make a donation, what can they do? The easiest way to do it, if you go to the Kennewick Police Foundation, uh, there's a website that tells them how to donate. Certainly they can uh, send a donation uh, to the Kennewick Police Foundation, they can send it to the Kennewick Police Department. Um, I've had, uh, I've been at meetings where people have come up to me and said, you know, Chief, I really like that program, and who do I write the check to? Oh, nice. <laughs> so I tell them, and I've had people pull out their checkbook and write me a check and hand me a check. So I've collected a lot of checks for the foundation as well. Good. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today, Police Chief Ken Hohenberg. Keep up the good work. We appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah. We're back in a moment here on Meet in the Middle.